We are Queens, presented by Christiana and Prem. If you're looking for a home away from home, look no further than Queens, New York. A hundred ethnic groups have taken over specific neighborhoods, but the concentration has changed throughout the last hundred years. Of the two million occupants, half are immigrants, bringing in a diverse and thriving economy. In fact, unemployment is the lowest of all the five boroughs of New York City. It is also the most diverse urban area in the world. Could you imagine Greeks and Egyptians dominating over Astoria? Or perhaps the 44% of Filipino immigrants who live in Forest Hills. Maybe even that Colombians and Indians keep Jackson Heights running? It's probably no wonder why Archie Bunker and his family were residing in Astoria. The Hefferins were a working class couple living in Rigo Park and Prince Akeem who was looking for his queen and where else but Queens. To get a better understanding of how Queens has become what it is today, we need to go back a couple of hundred years. Queens used to be run by Dutch and British colonists. Governor Stuyvesant gave grants in 1636 to the Dutch, settling in what is known as Dutch Kills, Astoria, and Hunter's Point, which is in Long Island City today. The English from the north and east settled in Queens too, so long as they swore to the Dutch. In 1642, they settled in what is known today as Maspeth, named after the Maspeth Indians. After war between the Native Americans and Dutch, Flushing in 1645, Newtown in 1652, and Jamaica in 1656 were formed. The English eventually took over Dutch rule in 1664, renaming New Amsterdam as New York and Long Island as Yorkshire. By 1683, the settlements expanded to five towns, Newtown, Flushing, Jamaica, Hempstead, and Oyster Bay. Then it was decided that the county would be named Queens, after Queen Catherine of Braganza, the wife of King Charles II. For the next two centuries, Queens flourished as a rural and agricultural society. Europeans flooded into Queens, mostly the Irish, Swiss, and Germans who came from Brooklyn. Queens became industrial with factories, mills, and brewers. Became popular. It urbanized so fast that by 1872, Astoria housed a factory, post office, a kindergarten, library, and parks. This made people look at rural areas to live in. So land speculators decided to turn farms into village lots and residential sites. Neighborhoods like Maspec, Corona, Long Island City started to sprout. Manufacturers looking for residential sites settled in Woodhaven, College Point, and Whitestone. The Rockaways were a popular choice for summer homes. Ridgewood boomed and more people migrated from Brooklyn, settling in Richmond Hill and Ozone Park. This move was much easier thanks to the L built in Myrtle Avenue. Finally, Queens became a part of the Greater New York in 1898. The Pennsylvania Railroad took over the Long Island Railroad, creating a commutable passage from Manhattan to Forest Hills, South Ozen Park, Howard Beach, and Kew Gardens. The ferries, once a lifeline of traveling, were replaced by the Queensboro Bridge. With these forms of transportation, along with the influx of immigrants flowing into Ellis Island, Queens boomed into a home away from home. Let's go to Newtown. Corona. If it weren't for the Long Island Railroad, Corona might not have existed as it did in 1872. Remember earlier when we mentioned that people were looking for rural places to live in? Well, Corona, then known as West Flushing, was one of them. Factories like the Lewis Comfort Tiffany Factory were built there, and many of the elite, such as the Rockefellers and Mark Twain, shopped there. When the elevated train on Roosevelt Avenue was created, 
the neighborhood became bustling. Shops and markets open everywhere, bringing in money and more diversity. The neighborhood was predominantly African American and Italian, and by the 1950s, followed by an emergence of Dominicans. In the 1970s, the Hispanic population increased, though a fraction of the population was also German and Jewish. Latinos were the fastest increasing ethnic group in Queens between 2000 and 2010. Today, most immigrants in New York City live in Corona. The neighborhood is populated with South Americans, Dominicans, and Puerto Ricans. Wow, when was the last time you ever heard of a $900 apartment? Ha! Huh? Take a look at these next two maps, which describe the differences in ethnicities in Corona between 2000 and 2010. As you'll notice with the first map, there are a lot of Hispanics living in Corona, but in 2010, there are more Hispanics living in Corona. Astoria. Before Astoria became the hit place for young professionals to live in, it was a wealthy playground for millionaires. In the 1800s, rich fur merchant Stephen Halsey invested in land and created residential plots. The village was named after Halsey's millionaire friend, John Jacob Astor. Ferries coming into the land allowed people to move in. Mansions were built and eventually so were major streets like Steinway Street which housed the piano factories, employees' homes, and local stores, and the street Broadway. Again, we see how mass transportation contributes to how Astoria evolved. The elevated train allowed more commuting, and eventually more houses and apartments were built. Perhaps the wealth of the neighborhood came from their motion picture studios like Kaufman Astoria Studios, where many well-known movies were filmed. Astoria was vastly Italian, with some Germans, Irish, and Czechs, but a little niche called Dittmars was home to many Greeks in the 1960s. In the 1980s, it was home to a third of all Greek New York City immigrants. Wow, Christiana, that's 33%. It is, Prem, and they were almost half the population by the 1990s. Today, the over 200,000 residents in this melting pot are Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, South Asian, Arab, and European. There is a new kind of gentrification scene in the story now, where young urban professionals are looking for affordable, hip places to live that are close to Manhattan and nightlife. Hey, it's gentrification, lives in Astoria. And here we have a present day map of Astoria and the surrounding streets. As we did with Corona, uh, here we have two maps uh, between 2000 and 2010 of the demographic shifts in Astoria. And as you can see, there hasn't really been much of a shift, but in fact, it has actually gotten more Caucasian. Flushing. This massive town is known today as Chinatown and is filled with museums, gardens, shopping centers, and even a stadium. But that wasn't the case 400 years ago when Flushing, known by its Dutch name Vlissingen, was home to the Quakers seeking refuge. Eventually, this town would be home to more than those seeking refuge. Flushing was a holding ground for the abolitionist movement and a pioneer for free public education for the poor. In the 1800s, Flushing was starting to urbanize thanks to a newspaper circulation, secondary schools being built, and even... Is it transportation? You guessed it, from Mass transportation. Railroads were being developed and electrified, and trolley lines were also being established, making commuting easier and living in Flushing much more possible. When the subway system linked Flushing to Manhattan in the early 1900s, major housing developments were in the works. This led to an increase in population, and by mid-20th century, the, with the abolishment of laws that banned immigration based on origin, Flushing saw an influx of Chinese, today 40% of the population is Chinese actually, and Korean immigrants. Main Street, the main artery in Flushing, is booming with Asian businesses. 
Flushing is one of the most successful neighborhoods in New York City, boasting job increases every year consecutively since 2005. Flushing also boasts an increase in salaries and wages, partly due to the large health sector that is situated in the neighborhood. Please enjoy the following graphs and maps as we prepare for the next township. Jamaica. Now, welcome to Queen Village. On the eastern side of Queens is truly a lovely little small town for middle class workers to live in. It used to be called Little Plains because everyone would come and use the land for their cattle. It was a popular area to establish farms in the early 19th century when a blacksmith by the name of Thomas Bush started to urbanize the area, the town turned into the name Brushville after him. About 30 years later, the residents of the area decided to name it Queens. However, in 1923, the Long Island Railroad changed its name from Queens to Queens Village, so it wouldn't confuse the name between this settlement and the new borough. Because of its location and land type, it remains a quiet suburban place, very different than its fellow neighborhoods on the west side of Queens, like Astoria and Long Island City, but not as expensive as other neighborhoods like Floor Park and Belrose. The houses created in the early 1900s had attics and cellars, and mainly still remained there today. Queens Village is also quite a melting pot. It used to be a primarily Jewish neighborhood, but as many ethnic groups in Queens, they moved into other parts. Today it is, call, it is called home by Africans, Caribbean Americans, Asian, Hispanics, African Americans, and even Russians. Richmond Hill Welcome to Richmond Hill. South Queens hold a unique neighborhood called Richmond Hill. Most ethnic groups in neighborhoods don't have a distinct starting and ending point. Richmond Hill isn't one of them. First, let's take a look at how Richmond Hill was established. For the most part, it was generally Italian, Irish, and German. In the 1800s, it had a huge German population as mentioned. Since Germans lived in Brooklyn and came up to Richmond Hill when Myrtle Ave was established. Since the Long Island Railroad needed workers, many families in Richmond Hill traveled to be closer to their work site. And when they were looking for somewhere bigger and better to live in, a new wave of ethnic groups came in and this time they were from the Caribbean islands, India, and South America. After going through dramatic demographic changes today, we can distinguish who lives in where Richmond Hill. North Richmond Hill is home to the middle class. It has Victorian style homes and is consistently doing well. Central Richmond Hill is home to a massive Sikh community. South Richmond Hill is home to blue collar working class families and primarily Guyanese and Trinidadian. Jamaica. Jamaica is perhaps one of the most well-known neighborhoods of Queens. Named after the Jamaica Indians, this neighborhood is rich with history. The Dutch first settled in the area in 1656 and was the heart of Queens County 
for more than a hundred years before the seat was moved to Mineola in 1788. Again, transportation plays a critical role in the formation of a neighborhood. Come early 19th century, the Flushing, Newtown, Jamaica, and Rockaway turnpikes were established. There were even tolls created to ensure good road service. For the most part, Jamaica in the 19th and 20th centuries were occupied by the new Irish immigrants who settled around Baisley Pond Park. Then, in the 1950s, the term white flight took hold and African Americans started moving in, in from Harlem with the newly completed Triborough Bridge as white families looked forward to the suburb areas, such as Levittown. Please enjoy the rest of the remaining graphs that describe the number of houses and costs throughout the years of Jamaica. Now let us fast forward to present day, Queens. Queens has expanded becoming the largest area in the five boroughs of New York. As mentioned, more efficient ways of traveling has helped transport more and more people into Queens. Who travels by horses, boats, or railroads anymore? Okay, maybe railroads are still used, but what else is there? The subway! Queens serves 81 stations on seven main lines. In addition, there are 100 local bus routes, two major airports with several major highways leading in and out of Queens. 